This is the new Nissan Leaf and it's the best selling electric car in Europe. In fact, they sell one every 12 minutes. And speaking of 12 minute world records, that's how long it took Kenanisa Bekele to run the 5,000 meters. It's the length of time that Alexei Leonov spent on the first ever spacewalk. And it's also how long it took old Joey Chestnut to consume a record breaking 191 barbecued chicken wings. Now I don't know how much all that lot costs, but I do know that the Nissan Leaf, it starts from 26 and a half thousand pounds. If you go to carway.com, you can get it from 25,000 pounds. Plus you can get a four and a half thousand pound government grant to go towards that cost. Now, if you want to see how much you can save on a new car, click on the pop out button in the top right hand corner of the screen or on the link below the video to go to carwow.com. There are some things I really like about the interior of this car. For instance, all models get this digital screen here with lots of driving information. And when you turn the car on, you get a nice little graphic of the car pop up. Then there's the design itself. I think it's quite interesting. And this car has leatherette up here and on the doors. I always like the fact that you've got this little trophy mobile phone, which is angled downward so it doesn't slide out when you brake or accelerate. And it's right next to the USB port for plugging your phone in as well. What's not so good though, is that you've got quite a lot of dark black brittle plastic on the dash and up here on the top of the door, which is especially annoying if you're one of those people that likes to rest their arm up there when they're driving because it gives a bit of ache on your elbow. And you've also got no padding here on this armrest, so that's a bit ache after a while as well. The thing that gets me most are these things here. Look at this cover for the 12 volt socket and the, the heater switches for the seats. They just seem like they've been thrown on, like they're from another car. And you can get heated seats in the back as well, but the switch is here for some reason. And once again, it's a cheap feeling switch. Now let's talk about equipment. So the entry level car doesn't get this seven inch screen, but all other models do. And the great thing about it is that it comes with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto standard. So you just plug your phone in and just run Waze sat nav because it's much better than any manufacturer system. The infotainment system itself is very easy to just navigate. The screen could do with being a little bit high definition, but it's okay and it's simple to use. In terms of kit levels, well, the end connector has pretty much all you need, but I actually like this range topping techno because it adds things like LED headlights. You also get full leather seats and a Bose sound system, which is really, really loud and punchy. It does add to the price, but I plug the details into the car wow and I got an offer back and it's a saving of 1600 pounds. So it comes in at just over 30 grand. But remember, you get 4,500 pounds government grant towards that. So that reduces the price. Then it's, it's not too bad at all. Now let's talk about practicality in here. So decent sized door bins, they're not the biggest, but they're all right. You've got an absolutely massive glove box. There's some big cup holders here and some more storage under here as well. Okay, then let's move on to the back seats. So this is supposed to be a viable family car. Is it then, is it? Well, actually, it's decent enough back here. So knee room is very good. Head room, if I sit up dead straight, I've got probably just that much space above my head. People over six foot may find it a bit tight for head room. The biggest issue I have though, is the fact that this, look, because the batteries are underneath the floor, the seat seems quite low to the floor and you've got quite a bit of angle between your low leg and your thigh. So over long distances, it could get a bit uncomfy. You've also got this central hump as well. So if you need to carry three at once, it actually doesn't get in the way too much. And this middle seat is really padded and squidgy. It's all right. In fact, the seats themselves in the back of this car are very, very comfy. Now let's move on to the boot. So the actual space you've got is 30% bigger than an Egos. In fact, it's really quite large, but functionality isn't especially great. There is a bit of a lip, as you can see, to lift stuff over, which is annoying. You've got a heavy suitcase. Thankfully I haven't. Also there's these bags here for, look, all your charging cables. Oh no, <laughs> there's another one here. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get someone else to put these back because they're like slippery eels trying to get them into the bag. They're <laughs> a right nightmare. And then if I fold the seats down, you'll notice another problem. There is a huge ridge to lift stuff over if you want to put things at the front of the car. And if you've got the Bose sound system, that takes up some of the space as well. Hmm. Now, if you want to see more about this car's practicality, click on the top right hand corner to watch our detailed practicality video and you'll see what it's like with three people in the back, how much stuff you can fit in the boot and how easy it is to fit a child seat in this car. Now then, it's time to talk about what's good, what's not so good about the new Nissan Leaf. Well, you can move the steering wheel up and down. You can't move it in and out. So 
yeah, you might find it a bit difficult to get comfortable behind the wheel, especially if you've got a slightly unusual arm length to leg length ratio. The reading light for the rear passengers is more in the front of the car, it's just miles away, and it's got a weird lever-like switch rather than push buttons. If you want to charge your car away from home, you're going to need to use one of the many charging points. Now these are all operated by different companies and you have to register with the companies to be able to use their ports. So if you want full access to all of the charging ports available in the country, you're going to have to join all these schemes there. And often they have a subscription fee. So that's a bit annoying. It'd be easier if you could just use your credit card and lots of different charging points. Hmm. Another problem is, is that if you want to use fast charging, which is DC charging, there's three different connectors. Nissan has its own connector, BMW has its own connector, and Tesla has its own connector. So I couldn't charge this at one of Tesla's many superchargers. While you can get the car with surround view cameras, the definition from them is really low resolution. I mean, look at this, reversing camera. It's, it's all very grainy and blocky. For some reason, the graphic Nissan has used for the car in front on the active cruise control looks like an Audi. See? Thankfully, it's not all bad. Here's five cool things about the Nissan Leaf. You can get a special app for your phone which allows you to see where you've parked your Leaf, how much charge it's got left, and you can even set the temperature of it before you get in. Many of the interior plastics are made from renewable sources, and the seats in the Ascenta model are actually covered in recycled fabric. How very ecologically responsible. As well as Isofix fittings in the back, you get them on the front passenger seat as well, so you can keep your little baby close to you when you're driving. Yeah, yeah, he's a stinky little boy. Oh, he does actually stink. But just under £4,000, you can get Nissan's home charging station, and that includes some solar panels for the roof of your house, so you can charge the car from the sun's rays, which obviously is eco-friendly, and it's free. The system also allows you to actually send power from the car into your house, so you can actually run your home from the car's battery, What's more, if you've got some spare charge left over, you can put it back into the national grid and the national grid will pay you for it. Now let's say that you actually have free charging at work. You could return home with a full battery, plug it into the national grid and make some cash. Probably not ethical, but definitely doable. Because the Leaf has no engine, it's almost silent at town speeds. That's why it emits this kind of whirring sound from speaker in the front to warm pedestrians of its approach. However, you can turn it off if you want to, but that doesn't mean you can go knocking people down because the car has pedestrian detection and it'll automatically brake if it thinks it's going to hit someone. Other safety kit includes lane departure warning and blind spot monitoring, and they're all standard. That's not the end of the driving assistance systems though. Higher specification cars get even more kit. The Tecna version of this car gets Nissan's Pro Pilot and it's essentially autonomous driving, well, semi-autonomous driving. So I engage it by putting the cruise control on and it'll do the usual thing of keeping me a safe distance from the car in front by using a radar. So I set my speed. There we go, let's do it to 70. Also, the cruise control system will work in stop-start traffic. So even if you come to a standstill, it'll work. And then if you want to go again, you just press a button on the steering wheel and it starts you off. It's also got lane keeping assist, so it will steer to keep me in lane. So you can drive along with your hands off, though you shouldn't. It actually does a good job of keeping you in lane. Now, the car will get cross if I don't put my hands on the wheel, and it's gonna start beeping, and then it's gonna issue a warning, and now it starts braking. Can you see it? And it's doing that noise. So it's basically trying to jolt me to just say, what are you doing? Put your hands back on the wheel. And if I don't respond, it will bring the car safely to a standstill in lane. That's a really good idea, a very, very safe system. In fact, I think this piloted system is better than that in many far more expensive cars. According to Nissan, with a full battery, this Leaf has a range of 235 miles. However, the trick computer actually looks at your driving style and it works out the actual range based on how you drive. And with a fully charged battery, I have not seen more than a 150 mile range. So yeah. Also, when you're traveling on the motorway, say you're doing 70 miles an hour, which is the speed limit, for every eight miles you do, your range drops by 10 miles. And let's say you're one of those people who likes to speed and break the law and travel at 80 miles an hour. Well then for every six miles you do, your range drops by 10 miles. So you can't go quite as far as you might think. So it involves a lot of planning. If you want to do any kind of distance in your leaf, you're going to have to register with these guys, Ecotricity. 
and all you have to do is download their app, press charge, then all you have to do is use your phone's camera to scan the pump's QR code. Right, that's all good to go, so I'm just gonna stick the charger into my car. And then just hit start charging and away we go. Now I've just got to wait for about 45 minutes till it's charged. So I think I'm going to go have a coffee. This is actually the quickest way to charge the Leaf. Next is a rapid charger, which would take about seven and a half hours to fully charge from empty. While using a three pin wall socket will take 21 hours. Right, and that's charging finally complete. And in 48 minutes, I've gone from a 25% full battery to an 89% full one, and it's cost me £7.71. Though the electricity, this is a good thing, is from the wind and the sun, so it's, well, it's zero emission. This is a zero emission vehicle. Now, when I do the maths, it works that this car, travelling at 70 miles an hour on the motorway, being charged by this thing here, will cost the same to run as a 1.5 litre turbo petrol Golf travelling at 70 miles on the motorway. So, no overall savings using this, but still not that expensive. However, if you charge overnight at home on an economy tariff, the Leaf will cost usefully less to run than a normal petrol or diesel car. What's more, it feels refreshingly unique from behind the wheel. The first thing you notice when you drive this Nissan Leaf is that it's eerily quiet because you haven't got an engine, you've got an electric motor and they're almost silent. Then there's the fact that you sit quite high in it and the, the driving position feels almost as high as those small SUVs that are all the rage at the moment, so visibility is good and that helps this car be easy to drive around town, as does the sharp steering, the fact it handles well and the fact that you've got an automatic so there's no changing of gears. There is one thing though that is a bit of a problem. So generally over bumps, it's not too bad, it soaks them up, you never get any hard jolts, it doesn't feel uncomfortable. However, the suspension always feels a little bit busy. So it's almost like the car is kind of like a hyperactive child that's been made to sit quietly in school assembly because it's constantly just moving and jiggling around and all a little bit unsettled. Really, I think Nissan's engineers could do with giving this car suspension a shot of Ritalin. Now, I can forgive this car for feeling like it's got ants in its pants because in other respects, it's brilliant to drive. Now, I'll explain why. So, in a normal automatic car, when you lift off the accelerator, the car kind of cruises and steadily reduces in speed. So, if you want to stop a bit quicker, you have to use the brakes. With an electric car, though, they have a braking mode. What that means is that when you lift off the accelerator, the electric motor works in reverse and it actually provides resistance. And when it's providing resistance, it's actually recouping energy as you're slowing down, converting it into electricity to charge up the batteries. But it gives a more severe engine braking effect than a normal car would. So here I am, I'm gonna lift off the throttle now and it slows down quite significantly quicker than it would do just like a normal automatic car. However, this Nissan Leaf can go on better. It's got something called e-pedal. And what that does is combine that regenerative effect of the electric motor with the actual normal brakes. And it means that when you lift off the accelerator from the same speed again, look at this, it slows much, much quicker, like you're braking, but I'm not actually touching the brakes. I've just lifted off the accelerator and it'll bring you to a complete stop like that. And what that allows you to do is drive this car along pretty much all the time never having to touch the actual brake pedal. And when you combine that with the responsiveness of this electric motor, it's just brilliant for just zipping in and out of traffic. You see this car can do 0 to 60 in just under eight seconds, but because the electric motor, you know, unlike a petrol engine, it doesn't have to take a deep breath before it takes off and there's no gears to change down either. You put your foot down, it just takes off and the instant acceleration is more like a car that can do 0 to 60 in about four seconds. For me, the reason to buy this car isn't the fact that it's more eco-friendly than a normal car, well, so long as you charge it using renewable sources. It's not the fact that it's cheaper to run per mile than a normal petrol or diesel car either. Really, the reason I would buy this car is just because it's so entertaining and so unique to drive. That's why I'd have it. And so if it worked out for me in terms of charging facilities and stuff like that, I would definitely, definitely have this over a normal hatchback like a Ford Focus or Volkswagen Golf, without question. I really, really like this car. Now, if you click on the pop-out banner in the top right-hand corner of the screen, or on the link below the video, you can go to carwire.com to see how much you can save on a Nissan Leaf 
or any new car for that matter. So then, my verdict. Well, if you're looking for a family car, you should consider the Nissan Leaf. And if you do consider it, and you figure out that going electric works for you, then you should just go right ahead and buy it. Because pound for pound, this is the best electric car currently on sale. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it and click on our logo to subscribe. Click on the video window for more content or on the choose to buy icon to see how much you can save on the new Nissan Leaf. Now, did you spot the Easter egg in this video? It was the leaves in the car's center console.